So in this video, I want to get into why the technique of replacing good thoughts with bad thoughts um, doesn't really work. Um, it's not that it doesn't work at all, but it's not as effective as something else that I will explain shortly. So, for example, if someone has a negative thought that they're struggling with that keeps coming up, such as, I am dumb and I'm worthless and I'm ugly. What Either one of these things could, could be the thought that comes up, or it could just be a negative feeling about yourself, just not feeling good about yourself. Then one advice that some, sometimes people give is to just, well, think something positive instead, which helps in the moment, but here's the problem with that. If you think something positive instead, that takes you willpower and you feel better in the moment, but really, you don't have the willpower to do it when you're at your worst. So it's really a fix for the sunshine only and not for the dark days or not for when there's, there's clouds in the sky. What I mean by this is if you're coming home from work exhausted and you have this persistent thought that keeps coming back to you of I am dumb or I am worthless or I am ugly, then after this work and after this exhaustion you're not going to have the energy to have the discipline to think, oh, well, I should think this instead. Let me shift my mind back to the positive thought. And this is why this advice is, I would say, unhelpful, totally. But it's really an advice that only works on a sunny day. Uh, it only works when you have enough energy left to even take the action to shift your mindset. Um, and I'm not saying that there's no value in that, but I'm saying that there's a deeper thing you could do that makes it unnecessary to apply tricks like that. So what I would give you as, an, as a metaphor or as like a picture is that a negative thought or feeling that bubbles up is really like a weed that grows in your garden where you're trying to cultivate uh, all the good flowers of your psyche. Everything that you want to be going on in your mind and this weed is popping up that says I'm dumb or it says I'm ugly. And then what you could do is you could trim the weed and just cut it off at the soil and then put a nice flower on top of it. Which means that basically you seem to have fixed the problem and this could be permanent, it could not be permanent, but at least there's a flower on top of that now. But really the weed is coming from a root. And this root will still be there if you do this. And at some point it will grow a new weed. And this actually also happens with these negative thoughts or feelings. At a certain point they will just grow a new, they will just sprout a new uh, end and come up again as something else. Uh, one example of this would be if you just have the thought again like I am dumb, I'm worthless. Well, what could I replace this thought with? Well, I could think I'm really smart and I'm very valuable. And every time I'm thinking I'm dumb and worthless, I'm going to switch to thinking I'm smart and valuable. And that might you feel, make you feel better in the moment. But then, again, if you're like super exhausted or something bad happens, again, you might find yourself thinking, well, I'm really dumb and I'm really worthless. Uh, and I just have no energy to change my mindset right now. So what are you going to do then? What are you going to do when you don't have energy to change your mindset? Another example of this is if someone walks around, for example, with, and these are all examples from real life, by the way, people that I know, someone who walks around with a sense of being inferior. And the sense of being inferior makes them kind of uncomfortable with themselves and it could make them seek pleasure to compensate for that, such as smoking cigarettes. So somebody could smoke cigarettes as a compensation for feeling worthless or feeling bad about themselves in some way and then they could say well I'm just going to use discipline to stop smoking cigarettes or they could even use hypnosis to stop smoking cigarettes and some hypnotist could implant the idea in your mind that you don't need to smoke cigarettes which does solve the problem of smoking but then the root is still there and it will sprout something else and the addiction to cigarettes could then transform it goes away but then it could transform into an addiction to working on yourself 
like I've, I've overcome this addiction, but now I'm going to work on myself and improving myself and I'm going to hit the gym and look at myself in the mirror and make my muscles bigger every day and eat the best diet and just work on that until I feel like I am valuable enough, which is never going to happen. Either that or it could be I'm just going to read books, I'm going to make myself read three books a week or uh, four books a month and I'm just going to read and read and read and take notes until I feel like I'm smart enough, which is never going to happen because again, the sense of worthlessness is not in how much you're reading, it's coming from a deeper root. So that, those are two examples of ways in which this trickery could only solve the problem in the short term. So here's something that uh, I like to do when I have uh, something come up, like some pain, some negative thoughts, some negative feeling that seems to be coming up again and again, or it seems to be an overreaction to some trigger, some external trigger, like in this case it was something <laughs> being woken up before I want to be woken up, and if I have a disproportional emotional reaction to that, then I will go into the exercise that I'm going to explain now, which is basically I find the root, and the root is in this case, in all the cases, I assert that the root is unprocessed emotional pain. So some kind of pain from the past that has not been processed yet, or not been processed fully because you were not in a position to fully um, go through the full grieving process. So there was some kind of painful situation, a version of yourself still working on that, still stuck in a loop, and it hasn't had the opportunity to fully go through the grieving process and release it. And so you can help those past versions of yourself do that. Uh, after I did this, I felt a profound surge in energy. I felt very motivated to be productive. And my energy level and my mood was completely flipped around. It does really help to make permanent change. 